Hey guys, Nick here with Phone Arena and what I have in my hand is the first YOLO smartphone and the first smartphone to ship with the new Sailfish operating system. Now the name probably doesn't sound familiar. This is a brand new operating system that's based on Mego, a former operating system used by Nokia. It is heavily focused on navigation through gestures and there's also a number of other unique things about it. Let's check it out in detail and see if it has anything to impress us. So here it is guys, the very first smartphone from YOLO and the first smartphone to come with Sailfish OS. It's a very special, very interesting device, we have to admit. It certainly doesn't feel like uh, anything that we've uh, had the chance to try in the recent past. Most of its character comes from this two-tone, two-layer design. It appears as if two pieces have been fused together, creating the body of uh, this uh, very special smartphone. The back of the device is made of polycarbonate, it can be removed by the way, and it's very well resistant to fingerprints and here at the bottom you can see the very discreet YOLA logo. On the back all we have is the 8 megapixel camera with uh, its LED flash. Here on the right side of the device we see the volume rocker and the power key. On top of the smartphone we have the micro USB port and a 3.5mm headphone jack, another YOLA logo right here. There's pretty much nothing going on on the left side and nothing on the bottom. And uh, you might notice that there aren't any keys on the front side of the device. There's just a tiny LED light here for notifications, but we'll tell you what's with that in a bit. So that's the YOLO phone. One of the unique things about the YOLO phone is that its removable back cover can actually augment its functionality. See, when you put the cover on, the smartphone actually detects that and it knows what color is the back cover and automatically it will adjust the theme of the device creating a new experience. The yellow phone is of average size for a contemporary device and we find it pretty easy to handle. We can also easily operate the power key and the volume keys located on its side. The corners however are a bit sharp and dig into our palm which doesn't feel nice. The yellow smartphone comes with a 4.5 inch IPS LCD display. The screen is okay, but its resolution is rather underwhelming, just 540 by 960 pixels. That's alright, but still underwhelming for such an expensive smartphone. Its color production is okay, but blacks are pretty much non-existent. You don't get fancy extras like a super sensitive touchscreen, so you cannot operate it with gloves. And what's even worse, there isn't an automatic adjustment for the brightness of the display, so you have to set that manually. As we mentioned earlier, there aren't any physical navigation keys or on-screen navigation keys on the YOLO smartphone. That's because the Selfish OS is built around gestures, that's how you find your way around. And that's not a perfect solution. You use gestures to switch between apps to minimize them or to close them. Some of these gestures can be tricky to perform and they definitely take too long to get used to. Still, there are things about Selfish OS that we quite like. For example, you can double tap on the screen to wake up the phone and the notification panel is triggered from the bottom of the phone, which is actually very convenient. There aren't any widgets in Sailfish OS, but when you minimize an app, it gets sent to a dedicated screen and there it kind of acts like a widget. For example, in the middle we have the music player and here I have controls for the music playback. If you think that you have too many apps open, just hold your finger on one of them and close them one by one. Right now the number of applications that are available for Sailfish OS is very, very limited. You can, however, get some Android apps running on it. Unfortunately, this has to be done through a third-party Android store and there's only about 85,000 apps in it uh, right now. And some of the popular titles are missing. For example, you won't find Angry Birds here and uh, you won't even find an official Facebook client on this. You will get Twitter, however. Just to give you a quick example, here's Fruit Ninja for Android running on the yellow smartphone. And as you can probably see, the app isn't running very well. The frame rate is kind of low, so the Android support is still kind of shaky, not to mention that apps might crash every once in a while. Now let's take a look at some of the stock applications of Sailfish OS. Here's the dialer, for example. It is really simple, really minimalist 
And if you need to call a contact, you just drag down and you get this menu from the top. You highlight call contact and you type the name of the person you need to call. Here's the messaging application. Again, it's really simple. It's uh, pretty straightforward with no bells and whistles anywhere in sight. You cannot even attach an image to the message. You have to do that from the gallery. And also there is no portrait, uh, no landscape keyboard support, which is pretty strange. However, it is interesting to know that there is a Facebook integration, so your Facebook messages and SMS messages will appear here in the same app. When it comes to processing power, the YOLO smartphone doesn't really have anything to impress with. It is powered by a Snapdragon 400, a dual-core chip running at 1.4 GHz, and there's also 1 GB of RAM in there. The good news is that despite this mid-range configuration, the phone is actually very responsive. Navigation is pretty smooth, and uh, we're quite happy with that, even though the frame rate doesn't really run at 60 frames per second, as uh, we hope you can tell. Here we are at the settings menu, that's pretty much what you can uh, tweak about the device. And uh, you might notice that there's a built-in backup function, which works pretty well actually, we gave it a try. We must uh, note that uh, there are 16 gigabytes of storage built into the device, and 13.8 gigabytes of that is available. If you need extra, you can always get a micro SD card. What you see is the stock web browser on the YOLO smartphone. The app gets the job done, but it can be a bit frustrating to use. Sometimes rendering isn't very fast, especially on heavy web pages such as our home page. Text doesn't get inflated automatically, and there is no text reflow either. You do get some basic functionality, however, you can bookmark pages and you can open multiple tabs. Sailfish OS comes with a built-in camera shortcut. You have to be on this screen and pull down and then you highlight the camera option and there you go. So here we are at the camera interface. Again, the interface is really simple. There isn't really a whole lot going on. You do get access to some settings, but that's pretty much it. There aren't any advanced features like HDR or Panorama. Nevertheless, the phone can take some decent photos with its 8 megapixel camera. You just need a good light source, or better yet, be outdoors under broad daylight. That's when you will get good details and nice colors in your photos. In low light conditions, however, just don't really rely on this phone. The details in the night shots are very poor and the colors are often messed up. This is the music player that YOLA recommends for its YOLA smartphone. The app is really, really simple. It covers just the basic functionality you would expect out of a music player. Here's how you pick a song and that's pretty much all that the app can do. Of course, you can leave it running in the background and when it's minimized, its icon turns into a small widget-like tile. You can also take 1080p video with the yellow phone, but the quality of this footage is far from impressive. Even under broad daylight, there are poor details in the frame and uh, plenty of visible noise. It gets even worse at nighttime or in low light situations. There's even more noise and there's lots of motion blur in the video. You can expect average call quality with the yellow smartphone. The earpiece is actually pretty weak, we weren't impressed at all, and when we turned the volume all the way up, it started crackling. The microphone, on the other hand, gets its job done very well and delivers very clear audio on the other side of the line. The yellow smartphone comes with a 2100 mAh battery. According to the manufacturer, that should last through about 10 hours of continuous talk time. But uh, judging by our experience, battery life with the phone isn't really all that great, and if you're a moderate or heavy user, then you'll be probably recharging it every evening. So it's time for the final verdict. Is getting the yellow smartphone worth it? Well, to tell you the truth, uh, we don't think that you should spend 400 euro or $550 on a phone like this. You can get a lot better phones for the same amount of money, something like a Nexus 5 or even a Samsung Galaxy S4 if you add a few bucks to it. The operating system just isn't there yet. It feels kind of incomplete and it will take a while until it emerges as a viable alternative to Android or any of the other major operating systems out there. Thanks for watching our review of 
the Yola smartphone and Sailfish OS. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.